Well, welcome back. If this is your first time stopping by, thank you for that. And what I'm doing here is working on my dad's 1968 Fire We're doing a complete nut and bolt restoration. You can see the car body on the side. Engine sitting there, working on assembling that. It's probably 95% assembled. Like, these added some antifreeze. Needs a transmission still. I got one on the floor right there. Done picked that up. Need to put it back on. But before I put the transmission on, I kind of want to know if that thing's going to run. Kind of. I'd like to know if it's going to at least make some noise before I go through all the trouble installing the transmission. So today's video, we're going to do exactly that. We're going to see if this engine will at least make some noise, turn over, start, or do something. So the idea then, in case you want to try to make an engine run that's not hooked up to all the wiring, ignition switch, how can you basically hot wire an engine legally and show you how it's done? That's what we're going to get into here today. And how I intend to do that, I'm going to need a jump wire set, a good battery with a to go handle and some fire make it happen because if all else fails anything goes sideways you dump the whole thing on the entire thing light it on fire and be done with it now you don't need that to make the engine run but that's going to be an afterthought i need to get this hooked up first and like i said this engine is about 95 percent complete and slowly putting it together i've already got the battery cables routed grounded to the head and one over to the starter so the only thing I know about the starter is it was on this car when I bought it. I took it apart and cleaned it and painted it and made it look really nice. But I haven't actually bench tested it. So we're going to do that all in the same one pass here. Now, think about battery cables. Let's say this was a whole car or even like I have sitting here. Negative is hooked up. And if I touch that positive or anything or the other battery cable and it sparks really bad, stop. You got a short. Or smoke starts coming out of the harnesses, stop. You got issues. But... I don't even have a, a tiny little spark, so I'm uh, feeling pretty confident I could put this cable on and just leave it in place. And technically, I did that backwards. You put the positive on first and the negative, but uh, whatever. There's not enough of a car here to short things out. All right, nonetheless, now I've got that set up. Now we're going to go over here to the starter. Let's go for a little walk here, get my feet in place. Starter is installed on the driver's side of a Pontiac engine. Chevy's on the other side. You'll see a purple wire attached to my starter cylinder. The big battery cable get you in here nope. nope right there hooked up to the starter now this wire here i call it the tickle wire make them go wire it happens to be purple that's what goes up inside to your ignition switch when you crank the key energize this wire engages the starter so if i wanted to hot wire the car i could put 12 volts right here to this then it would engage our starter turn our flywheel over flex plate over and have the potential to make the engine run so first things first i'm gonna go ahead and just hit that starter and see if it'll turn our gear around at all or even turn the engine over now, how I intend to do just that, I'm going to take our jump wires here, stretch them out far enough. Oh, it doesn't get tangled up in the works because I'm going to be turning the engine over. Oh, that over there. I'll we'll take the red cable, attach it to the positive, and that's essentially going to be our key on now. So if I were to touch it right there to the starter, it would turn over really nicely. Or I have the wiring harness all installed in this engine. If you look here, there is a nice purple wire on our connector. Guess what? Same wire. So if I added 12 volts positive to this wire here, that starter should engage and turn the flex plate or flywheel over when I want to actually energize that. So simple as that. I grab this wire, touch it to here, and if everything's good, this should turn over. Ta-da. Okay. Now I've just bench tested my starter, which is pretty cool. I know it actually operates. So the next thing is, uh need to test my ignition system for an engine to run first things first does it turn over yep could probably turn it over by hand but i can't turn it that fast so i'm going to use the electric starter but now i need to verify my ignition system is up to par or working and then we'll add some fuel in it and see if it lights off so let me show you here on the distributor which way to go let me get this air cleaner out of the way for visibility okay now Carburetor, ignition system. This ignition system is pretty much standalone. It doesn't need a whole lot besides a 12 volt source turning it on. So essentially what I'm just saying right now, if you wanted a hot wire car, a pointed style ignition system, I just need to add 12 volts here to the positive side of the coil. And that's where the ignition system gets its power and operates from. It comes into the coil then it goes through the points inside here, which then creates the ground pulse, which then Obviously, as it pulses, creates a spark. That's the basics of it. So if I wanted to hot wire this, I just need to add 12 volts to this right here. This is a pointed style distributor. Now, 
You may notice your car has one of these big honking things in it. This is a popular mod. Just change over to HEI style distributor. Okay, simple enough. Same thing. There's actually labeling on this plastic. It says TACH for tech and then battery. So if I wanted to turn this ignition on or off, I add 12 volt positive to the battery terminal. That turns it on. If I want to turn the key off or shut the engine off, remove the 12 volt positive and it'll shut off. Same thing holds true to this. If I wanted to start this engine up, add 12 volts here. Let's say all my fuel lines and everything are hooked up. And how I turn it off? Disable the 12 volt signal. Now I just said 12 volts. Now that holds true to HEI. Pointed ignition systems use about 9 to 10 volts. It steps down the voltage so you don't burn or arc out the contact points in your pointed ignition. So this one actually would be reduced voltage for that purpose. It has a uh, pointed style distributor. Now if you look inside of my distributor here, let me show you something. I have upgraded to that Excel points eliminator kit. So I don't have points anymore. It's an electronic ignition but it still runs only the nine volts to it or step down. So I can use this setup. This doesn't use a ballast resistor, but the actual positive wire that goes to this harness that goes down to that plug is a resistor wire. And that's how they reduce the voltage going to it. So if you wanted to swap over to your HEI, it really needs full 12 volts. So you need to run a new wire to get the full system voltage to that ignition system for the HEI to work as good as it should. Um, so that being said, let's add 12 volts to this here and let's test the spark. So like I said, we just discovered I need to add 12 volts to this signal here, positive voltage, to this to turn the ignition on. So my jumper wire set has two leads. If I can get it up here off the floor, well, red and black. Well, we're going to use the black wire for our ignition on, and our red wire is going to run our starter when we get to that point. So first thing's going to go on here. I'm going to hook this up to my ignition coil, and I'll go hook it up the, to the battery. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Let me show you here. I hooked it up to the battery. You probably can't see it up there, but I could probably get you in here. When I hooked it up to the battery, my ignition system turned on. And how I know that is, watch this. Disconnect this. See that? And you can hear. It clicks. So I'm actually making spark with that pointless, <laughs> pointless style ignition system. So that being said, my ignition is definitely turning on. So I want to pop the coil wire off, which is a wire here that comes off the coil. It goes right in the middle of the distributor. And I want to then hook up the starter, turn it over, which then rotates the distributor. And I should get a spark on pulse, 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 pulse out of this wire here. I'll probably run it right here to the ground. Let me see if I can't do that. Put, the, put you back up here and we'll see if we can't verify spark out of this thing. Now what we should have when I crank this over, oh, well, reddish, orangish spark. So, now I'll see if I can do all the above. I need to hold it on the purple wire. Oh, that still works. Okay, now, if everything goes according to plan, I should have a spark jumping from here. Let me pull this boot back some. And then see if... Alright, see what happens here. Contact. Yeah, I have spark. So, even to a rhythm. So, I think we're going to have that right. Now, as long as this distributor is timed right, I did drop it in top dead center compression one, pointing towards cylinder one, which is back here. So, it should be pretty close. I still got the distributor loose if I need to adjust the timing. But, we'll see what happens here. I'm going to dump some uh, old gasoline fire making happen in there. Let's see if this thing pops off. Now, in the words of some wise folks, you know, just a little bit will go, and you end up dumping in too much, and you say, perfect. But anyway, that should be enough for our little experiment here. All I want to know is if it makes noise. Like, does it even go? So I've got the ignition still turned on. I said, if I wanted to shut it off, it's stressing. If you were to do this, you want to shut off, just pull this wire, and it'll shut off. But since I only put a dab of gas in it, it should just go pop, pop, pop. Hopefully, and that's all we're going to get out of it. So. Oh, the distributor cap is still loose. Huh. I'm going to tighten that down. Well, well. There should be a little notch. It lines up. Well, mm -hmm. you got to be smarter than what you're working with here. Okay, got it. Okay. 
Man, I probably should have done this before I put gas in it. Oh, well. Okay. Just your, just your bitter cap is on. Now let's hit the starter here and see what happens. Contact. Oh, okay. Hey, that's a good lesson. Let me see. Kick this back a little further. Watch the uh, flex plate here when I do that. You'll see it. That the spin almost kicks it backwards. So, see how that went backwards? Now you may be asking yourself, why is it doing that? Well, let me tell you the secret. Timing's too far advanced. Is actually kicking the engine, or we'll call it bucking the starter. So I need to back the timing off. And I bet you our results will be different. That actually worked. <laughs> how about that? Um, you see how that actually started turning and it runs? That fired off pretty easy. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that's pretty cool. That actually started off pretty easily. Now, this is very dangerous to have that flex plate exposed and standing right here probably behind it in the fear of getting something stuck in there. That would not be ideal. So I'm not going to run this a whole lot longer for many reasons. It's a brand new camshaft. It needs a proper break-in. I need to make sure that I get the thing up to speed and up to temperature. I'm going to put the transmission on so that we can do that. Um, and second note, sorry, I'm just uh, kind of sad and wound up here. When that was kicking the starter backwards and bucking, that meant the timing was too far advanced. Now, if you had fireball shooting out of the carburetor, there's a chance you had your timing too far retarded or backed off too far. Assuming you've got the distributor dropped in the right way at number one, top dead center compression. So as long as that thing is true, then you've either got too far advanced, which bucks the starter or if it's shooting fireballs out of the intake, either 180 out on the distributor or too far retarded on the timing. So um, I, I don't yeah, I don't think I need to go much further. Now you know how to hotwire a car. Uh, don't use that for stealing cars, that information. Um, but that's all it takes. That's why they overcomplicated the ignition systems in 69 where it locks out the column, it locks out the shifter without a key. Because these older cars, well, it really is just that easy to make them run. Mm, anyway. You do what you want with that information. But nonetheless, got this thing will light off and fire and ran without really a whole lot of effort. Um, oops, disabled the ignition there. I hear a click every once in a while. But anyway, that works. So anyway, I'd like to want to share with you how to make that go in case you want to see if you make your engine run still in the car, out of the car, on the engine stand. Not preferably a lot of torque. May tip over. But if you have it on an engine run stand, kind of like I do right here, at least it makes some noise. I know my wiring is good. My distributor is good. My starter is good. Carburetor probably is fine. I have some vacuum lines still undone, and it started right up that easily. So super happy with that. So nonetheless, you don't want to miss this. Once it's running operational, see this body here behind me? I'm going to reattach these two, put it back together, and put the axle on. This car will be on all four tires again. So you don't want to miss that. Please subscribe, share with your friends. And if you want to see how I even got to this point, Go check out my older videos. It has it step by step, almost literally, how to rebuild the body, doing the engine, the subframe, everything up to this point, in case you think you want to try to knock some of this out in your garage yourself. So anyway, appreciate you following me on the journey of my dad's car called the Flamborghini. Definitely what we'll get into next time. I'll grab the camera. I hope to see you all then.